What's up, guys? Smoke Founder 101 here, and this is my raw review. Uh, let's get started, shall we? Uh, raw this week actually was pretty good. I mean, for once, Raw didn't suck cheese balls. It wasn't great. It wasn't. It was a. It was an okay show. More ups and downs, I would say. Let's get through them, shall we? We started off with a quick segment. It was like a quick. It wasn't like one of those twenty-minute-long segments. There was a quick ten-minute segment between Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns. Seth Rollins. Roman Reigns, Lana, and Rusev. Uh, Reigns came out. Saying that he wanted Rusev. Lana came out. They bantered back and forth. Uh, wasn't the biggest fan of Lana and Reigns going back and forth. In fact, mainly, mainly due to the fact that when Rusev came out, he got cheered. More so than he got booed. Reigns is getting booed more than the Russian sympathizer. What is wrong here? The Bulgarian brute is getting more cheers than... Vince McMahon's chosen one for the next era. I was like, yeah, he listens to his, he listens to the audience, my ass. Um, Reigns is acting like a heel. He, uh, he's acting like a heel. He's not a heel, which sucks, but he's acting like one in this feud. And he's the U.S. champion. Um, next, we had Brian Kendrick and beat T.J. Perkins. And what was that? It was actually a good match. Uh, T.J. Perkins, um, you know, he's doing he's doing all right. Uh, he the guy needs work though. A lot of the cruiserweights need work because man, mainly because the only cruiserweight that anybody in the building is recognized is Brian Kendrick. That's because Brian Kendrick has a history with WWE, tag team champions with Paul London, the Brian Kendrick having Ezekiel Jackson as his bodyguard. Uh, Spanky in the early day in his, when he, in his early days at WWE, when he mainly when he was getting his ass kicked by Brock Lesnar. Remember, remember that? He had a brief run in 2003. He left and then he came back. Um, but this was actually a pretty a good match. I think what made it a good match for me is when, and this was a smart spot. Okay, so you know those tur the turnbuckle padding and the metal that connects to the ring post. Well, what they did was they took, Kendrick took um, T.J. Perkins' fingers and put it in the metal bar connecting the turnbuckle to the the, the ring post. There's like, a, there's like a little gap where in the middle of the bar, uh, I guess is where the screws and stuff are supposed to go. He put T.J. Perkins' finger in that little metal gap. That was extremely smart, I have to say. I've never seen that before. So... Good on Brian Kendrick's part, in my, my opinion. Um, that was really good. Um, after that, we had a very good sit-down interview with Seth Rollins. And I haven't been saying this on here, but I've been thinking about this for a long time. They need to put more of these the sit-down interview segments on Raw for two reasons. One, it helps pass the time in a good way. And the good way is what leads to part two is the fact that these sit down interviews are good. These sit a lot of these sit down interviews are pretty damn good. So the fact that they had up until now they hadn't put one up on Raw yet, um, it, it was baffling. But they put one on Raw and it actually made sense. Rawls explained everything that he had to explain. Uh, he's gonna burn the the show to the ground and he's gonna take Kevin Owens with him. It was a very good segment, and they need to do more of that often. In fact, uh, unless if it's some guy like, say, freaking Braun Strowman, do not you, – you need to put a lot more sit-down interview segments on here. Um, speaking of Braun Strowman, next was a Braun Strowman beating up yet another jobber. Except after the match, Braun Strowman's like, look, I'm sick and tired of beating up all these jobbers. Mick Foley, I want an actual opponent. Like, soon and now. And that was it. It makes sense. He's been facing jobbers for a few for a couple, a few months now, and he wants to face actual opponents. And yeah, he faced Sin Cara, but he's, that's Sin Cara. Not exactly an improvement. So, let's see where this goes from here. It should, it should go well. He's probably going to feud against, like, an undercard level guy. 
slowly work his way up to mid card guys and that kind of thing. Uh, next we had what I thought was probably the best thing of the one of the best, the second best thing of the entire night, which was the sit was the segment between Kevin Owens, Chris Jericho, and the New Day. Jericho continuing his um, the list of Jericho. Um, <laughs> And uh, it was just a very good segment. New Day came out. I can't go into detail because, again, it's been a while. I, 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 I'm, I, I couldn't record all week until today. Today is Sunday. I'm re the show came out six days ago, so forgive my memory. Um, Raw, not Raw, uh, New Day came out. They talked, you know, you know, down to Owens and Jericho. Jericho's like, Kofi! You're on the list. He writes Kofi's name. There was even a little moment where it's like, no, it's not with an, it's not with a Y, it's with an I. Owens tells him. Um, then Biggie came on the list. Xavier Woods w was put on the list twice, which was funny. This led to a, and the reason why they did this segment is because, well, let's look at it. Jericho and Owens are a tag team. They're Jericho. They want to go after some gold. So Jericho thought, and they thought, you know, let's go after. The um, the uh, tag team titles, and Jer Owens is like, and Owens is basically saying, maybe it's a little bit of work for me because you know you're you're busy doing other things. I have, I'm the universal champion. Even Jericho was made a snide comment like, it's not like I'm asking you to defend your title against me, which gave Owens a horrified looking face, and even New Day after going them, it's like. Uh, Owens is like, you know what, let's face New Day, let's beat them, and let's win those titles, uh, eventually. Um, that led up to a match later on, I'll tell, I'll give my tale about one. Sami Zayn comes out, and he beats Titus O'Neil. I just realized something. Sami, Titus O'Neil, what the Titus even though it was a shitty feud, I'm glad they just stopped it. Wasn't Titus O'Neil in a feud with Darren Young? Wasn't Darren Young with Bob Backlund? W what happened to that? <laughs> what happened to Darren Young and Bob Backlund? Um, Titus O'Neil came out. He lost to Sami Zayn in a matter of minutes. Like a couple of minutes. Um, Zayn got the win, thank God. What they're, uh, It sucks that what they've been doing with Sami Zayn since he is... Since the battleground match with Kevin Owens, ever since then he's been not doing all match. Okay, yeah, he had a little bit of a mini feud with Chris Jericho at Clash of Champions, but but other than that, what has he really done? He was in a pre-show match against the Dudleys at SummerSlam with Neville, who also has not been been seen on TV. I'll get to that in a second. Um. We and we got this like a little bit um, after the new day. So, oh, I almost forgot. Uh, okay, so apparently they're marketing Goldberg at, for the ES for an ESPN special. Uh, this uh, th that probably already happened actually. Um, no, of course the rumor is Goldberg is going to be facing Lesnar in Survivor Series. I only have to say this: if they're going to do the match, it's going to be. And first of all, it's going to be better than WrestleMania 20 because both men are probably actually going to try, especially uh, Lesnar, hopefully. And um, and uh, and of course, it's going to be better than yeah. It's and it's not going to be at WrestleMania. It's going to be Survivor Series, which you know leaves the door open for what Lesnar might be doing. Um. So after that, uh, we got we were getting a you know before we got a little brief clip, but here we got a couple of tips from Sheamus and Cesaro. Apparently they were in town. They <laughs> they got lost because apparently Sheamus didn't know what the fuck he was doing. Sheamus blamed Cesaro on something, which was a legit point. Foley stepped into the locker room. He basically calmed down the situation. He said, "Go out there and work." Look and look. Look, I know some shit's been going on. You guys don't like each other. I got my balls cut off by Stephanie. He didn't say it like that, but that's what he basically that's what he was implying. Um Seriously, that's 
Stephanie's got to learn to stop cutting off the ball for people. Uh, so that there was that. It was a little bit forced. Funny when it was it was funny when it was just Seamus and Cesaro. When Foley's involved, it's it's not good. Mainly because McFoley as a ma general manager fucking sucks. He has been made to look like a complete fool this entire time. And he's going to be made to look like an even bigger fool when Stephanie reveals, oh yeah, I also helped fuck over Seth Rollins. Bullshit. Uh, oh god. Okay, so the club came out for a match. Um, yes. Carl Anderson and Doc Gallows came out for a match. They beat um, the Golden Truth, which was Gold Dust and Our Truth. That's not what bothered me. I mean, you, finally they got a win, a win on somebody, but that's not what bothered me. What bothered me is that before and during the match, Corey Graves kept on saying, "It's time for the club to continue their dominant reign, their their dominant tag team run WWE, the dominant their dominant runs of tag team." Okay, first of all. One, he must have been just watching New Japan stuff, because in that, because in New Japan they actually were dominant. They weren't being a fucking joke like they are in WWE. Two, what I just said, they're being treated like a joke in WWE. They lost to the New Day last week, and you're saying let's continue their dominant run. If they were so dominant, they would have won the titles by now. You, dumb, you jackass. Wow, that, that's the first really uh, idiotic thing I've ever heard Corey Graves say. Um, backstage, we had um, Ashton Kutcher, Danny Masterson, and Owens and Jericho um, in the back. Uh, it was actually an enjoyable... <laughs> it was actually a very enjoyable backstage segment. I actually had fun with it. I thought it was so much funny. And it... Uh, mainly because of Chris Jericho. It wasn't because of Kevin Owens. It wasn't because of Danny Masterson or Ashton Kutcher. It was Chris Jericho. He carried that segment for me. Ah, damn it. I got a lot of him. And sometimes it hurts. Um, but... <laughs> Jericho is just so fucking entertaining. Um... He, okay, so this is what happens at the end of the segment. <laughs> Jericho. Jericho. He, of course, his, his thing is like, you're going to get it. What is it? Um, and then, and he's like, and it's like, I don't care what happens. You're going to get, you're going to get, and then he just walks away. Master Sen and Kutcher talk to him among each other. All of a sudden, Chris Jericho comes, comes back to this. It. And he's got these wide eyes and he <laughs> the day that Chris Jericho leaves to do his thing with Fozzie again will be a sad day because Chris Jericho is literally the best thing on Raw right now um speaking of Jericho he got the losing pinfall and his, their match with and his and Owens match with New Day what happened is Seth Rollins it was actually a good match um what happened is Seth Rollins came out for the interference um, he didn't, he was still, he was still hurt, and he came out to interfere, uh, huh, huh, and, uh, it distracted Jericho long enough for, um, for Big E and Xavier Woods hit the Moonlight Drive. They didn't, they didn't use Kofi Kingston in this match because last week during the match at the club, Kofi got messed up. He got busted open, he had to have, like, several stitches in his head. So, not using this week, you know, stage of caution, it makes sense. Um, but this builds more of the tension between Owens and Jericho. Ashton Kutcher and Danny Masterson were on commentary. It was fun to see them banter back and forth. It was fun to see that. But other, but other than that, commentary was pointless during this match. Like they, they did, they had not, they added nothing to the match other than making me laugh. Um, but it had nothing to do with the match. Um, speaking of Rollins, after the match, I, 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 my memory may be off here, but I think he pedigreed, uh, Jericho after the match was over. All I know is that when the match was over, Owens got immediately out of Dodge and took the Universal title with him. Um, 
course, the storyline is that they're slowly going to break apart Owens and Jericho. Makes sense. Um, Rollins and Stephanie were backstage. Uh, Rollins made a crack about Triple H making the second biggest mistake of his life when he tossed Owens Rollins the title and made and made Owens his replacement. Saying the first one was marrying Stephanie McMahon. Uh, I got uh, I don't think so in terms of strictly Triple H because if that was the case, then Triple H would know where he would be nowhere as big as he is now. Um. Stephanie, uh, Rollins also, of course, Stephanie, Stephanie tried to cut off the balls of Rollins. So far, Rollins is the only one who actually has the balls to stand up to Stephanie. He's like, no, 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 no. I like, I, I'm liking this stuff, Rollins. He's like, fuck you, Stephanie. I'm going to do what the hell I want. He even said, look, look, I'm going to burn Raw to the ground. You're going down with it. And so is Owen and Jericho. That's basically what's happening. It's, this is obviously building a triple threat matchup to hell itself um, between Rollins, Jericho, and Owens. That really all depends on whether or not. Really all depends on whether or not Rollins will be um, able to compete. Uh, next, we had a fun little match. Short but fun. It was Tony Nese and, um, and Rich Swan. Beaten Tony Nese, who I don't even think he signed on to a contract. He beat Rich Swan on um, on Raw. The reason why Tony Nese and you know uh, the other guy, uh, I forget his name. Yeah, but the reason why Tony Nese is on Raw, even though he's not signed to a Raw uh, WWE contract, he's working in Evolve, and of course the relationship between Evolve and WWE. So he's able to do that. Um, First of all, Tony Nese is awesome. They need to push Tony Nese as like a heel. He looks like a heel guy to me. Second, this made me realize, where the fuck is Adrian Neville? Yeah, where's Neville? Neville's been gone for a while. And we haven't seen him since, I think it was like before SummerSlam. It may have been, no, it was just after SummerSlam when he was facing Kevin Owens um, in a match to determine who would be in the Fatal 4-Way Universal title. Um, match. Um, but, I, but ever since then, Neville has not been seen, which is weird because Neville, there's no way that Neville should not be in this mix somewhere. I understand they want to, you know, they want to put in the Cruiserweight Classic guys, but you got to put in Neville in there somewhere. Keep him in the mix. Make him feel important. Uh... It just makes me think that Cruiserweight would have been better on SmackDown because they actually know how to book their shit. <coughs> Next, we had uh, I don't I, I didn't see this on the Daily Motion ones that I saw, but I did read this on Twitter. Apparently, Emma is going to be returning. Is going to be returning. It's like going to be like Evolution or something like that. Um, I don't know whether she'd come back as a heel or a face. I think it would be a mistake to bring her back as a as a face. She should come back as a heel. Do the thing with Dana Brooke like it was originally planned, and then just go on from there. Sheamus and Cesaro beat a couple of jobbers. They argued during the match. It was fun. I, the one thing I will say that never gets old over time is the, the, the tag team partners that don't like each other. Because that always leads to good moments. I don't think that ever gets old. Charlotte, Bailey, and Dana were backstage. Charlotte was on her way to the to the ring to defend the women's championship against Sasha Banks. Um, Bailey, they well they came across Bailey, and Charlotte of course mocked Bailey, talked down to her, saying that oh you'll you know you know she'll never get her main event Raw match like the women did here. I'll get to that. Um, huh. And, uh, and afterwards, after Charlotte left and was done mocking Bailey, who took it, Dana decided to mock her even further, patted her on the head. Finally, Bailey, finally, Bailey's like the first person, like, nope, no more patting on the head. After that, Dana tried intimidating Bailey by shoving her up against the wall. 
Bailey in turn threw her against one of the uh <coughs> like one of the backstage storage boxes almost. And we saw Dana clutch her knee, so Dana wasn't coming out to to um for the match. Begin the match. The match happened. Charlotte versus Sasha Banks. Charlotte defending the women's championship. I gotta say. This is a great match. Best match all week. Even better than Matanza and Brink Puma. And I'll get to Matanza and Puma in the Lucha Underground review. But this was a great match, I gotta say. Um, Sasha, you know, crazy woman as always. Charlotte, Charlotte really impressed here with one move. She did a twisting corkscrew moonsault. That is awesome. I've never seen a woman do that. Um, Sasha got the win uh, with the bank statement, and for the, and Charlotte, I have to admit, she did a pretty good sell job of losing the title. She looked up at the screen where Sasha was celebrating. She said, "It was my title. It was my title. It belonged to me." Crying, obviously, as she did it. I guess she did take some from Ric Flair. So with that said, guys, this was actually a pretty good episode of Raw. Now that I have actually had time to talk about it. A pretty good episode. It was it was fun. You need to watch the sit down interview segment, the segment between New Day and Jericho, and the main event. That was all awesome. There was a couple things here that did bug me, but those were like you know constant errors. They they actually pulled out a pumped out a pretty good show here. So with that said, guys, I'll see you later with my SmackDown review. Have a good day. Peace.